Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether it be the God your father served, which were on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites, and whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I like the next verse, Joshua 24, 16. Said, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Where are the Christians in America with that kind of fervor and passion? See, the problem with most Christians in America is that your private faith is publicly irrelevant. The evangelical vote used to be the largest voting block, and they call it the silent majority. And I remember when my campaign manager first told me, he's, I, he said, well, well, what's your strategy? I said, well, there's 210 million professing Christians in America. 81% of America believes in God, and we don't have a politician that is real in terms of a faith in God. Uh, they, they do it like a used car salesman. They just talk about, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Well, if you're a Christian, you usually don't have to tell people. They know. So I just am not going to say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. I'm going to say America needs God because that's what really is the truth. I need Him. America needs Him. We all need Him. <laughs> and things are broken. And so I don't need to sell my resume. I need to talk about Him. And I'll tell you, we need people to take a stand. Because He said, he said it'll never happen if you count on evangelicals. It'll never happen. There's a silent majority for a reason. They don't open their mouths. They're cowards. They're more interested in firing up the grill tomorrow. They're interested in going out on the lake than fighting for freedom, fighting for America, fighting for righteousness in this land. He said they're too comfortable. It'll never happen. And I said, well, I guess the only way I win is if God wins then because there'll have to be a revival in the church and he'll have to, the Holy Spirit will have to give them discernment. If I'm, their man, if I'm God's man for this, then he's going to have to give the church of the living God holy discernment. Uh, but that's the only way it'll happen. I'm telling you, though, that God has raised you up for this generation. You are alive at this time for this generation because things are the way they are. We don't lament them. We stand in the gap. He's looking for a man. He's looking for, he's looking for someone who'll stand for him in this day for such a time as this. But there is hope for America yet. There is hope. God is still on the throne. He still governs in the affairs of mankind. All power in heaven and earth, he said, is in his hands. He's more powerful than the political elite. He's more powerful than the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or any party on earth. He's more powerful than those that count the ballots. He's more powerful than the United States of America and uh, the European Union, the United Nations, and all nations and institutions on this earth. There is hope in God. I say to you, we have great hope in God because blessed is the nation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It's really simple. We can have God's blessing on us once again. When God is our Lord. I was interviewed by the BBC in Sri Lanka this past week. And, I, and, I, and they asked me, they said, the United States is $31.46 trillion in debt. Would you consider that God's blessing on America? Thank you for the trap question. No, I said, uh, I said, no, I don't consider that God's blessing on America. I consider it His mercy on America that we are not consumed yet. There is hope because blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We have great hope because He still has a remnant of people who stand for righteousness, who stand for biblical principles and policies, who stand for biblical marriage and creation, who believes that God is supposed to be in public life and government is supposed to stay out of the church. The 2024 presidential election is a referendum on God in America. He's either welcome here or he's not. And we'll either have a president that seeks Him and follows Him, or we're going to get... A hasty, we're going to hasten our demise. But one thing is for certain, this world will not be recognizable 12 months from now. Everything you hear about what the current landscape is of the election, of America, of society, of the world order, I'm telling you 12 months from now, it will be unrecognizable. What usually historically has taken generations for shifts to happen have happened over, literally over the course of two to three weeks in March. Things that would normally take generations, not months, not years, not decades, generations, and they happened in two and a half weeks. The de-dollarization, I cannot, in, in all of human recorded history, it was always 
30 to 50 years, even after the decline of a world empire before anybody would go off of the standard of the previous empire's currency because it was too risky. And I'm telling you, it is already done. The plight of America is in our hands. Today is a Joshua moment. It is a matter of choice. We are the last hope for saving America. I want you to stand with me to be the light on the hill. A light that cannot be hid. A light that shines brighter the darker the sky. Stand with me in being who we ought to be so God can bless America once again. Stand with me as we lead our nation in sound wisdom in the fear of God and in the fear of the Lord. The destruction or prosperity of America is in our hands today. Hebrews 11.10 says he's looking for a nation whose builder and maker is God. We can trust God. 2 Timothy 2.19 says the foundations of God are safe and secure. I want to live in a nation built by God, don't you? I want to dwell and work and rest and play and build a business and raise a family in a nation that is built by God. Psalm 33.12, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. May we be the nation. May we be the people. And may God bless each one of you. And may Almighty God shed... His grace on America once again.